How's that? Does that sound good? Can you hear me now? We're off to a great start, Bubbles. We're off to a great start. I think we're good now. I literally did not have my microphone turned on. Jesus Christ, man. Off to a hell of a start. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage tonight. Um, let me turn this down a little bit. God damn, this is bumping in my fucking ears. <clears throat> Not that I am upset about that. The, the soundtrack for Spyro, all the three of the original Spyro games, uh, Stuart Copeland, drummer for the police, is phenomenal. It's magical. It's beautiful. It's one of the best soundtracks in a video game ever for me. I, and that's not even a joke. I know this is like a simple little platformer from the late 90s. Uh, the soundtrack for the Spyro, the original Spyro games, the original trilogy, the Insomniac Games Spyro. Uh, it, it's it's top tier shit, man. The guy went and made a phenomenal soundtrack. That's not a surprise because he was a mar he was a member of a. I would imagine a band that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I, I would imagine the police are in a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I think they are. Um, but Spyro 2, or Spyro in general, has been in the, the news the past couple days. Canadian guy A, who has a great YouTube channel. He's a big big uh, Spyro guy, uh, Crash guy. Um, he made a video um, talking about how he went to like PAX recently, and, and he's got some good intel that Spyro 4 is in the works. Uh, and it's going to be Toys for Bob that's developing it. Toys for Bob uh, did the Reignited trilogy that came out back in 2018, which was basically just a fresh new coat of paint on the original three Spyro games that were made by Insomniac Games in the late 90s. And I think Year of the Dragon, the third one, came out in like 2000 or 2001. Um, I'm a huge Spyro fan. When I think of like my earliest gaming memories, especially with the PlayStation, it's pretty much Siphon Filter and... Uh, Spyro. <laughs> That's pretty much like those are like my earliest PlayStation memories. Um, Siphon Filter and Spyro. In particular, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. Uh, Skylanders. Yeah, Spyro made its way into Skylanders. My 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 Spyro, um, you know, origin story is very much in the late 90s when they came out on the PlayStation One. Back in the day, whenever, and I think it was because like my parents would have bought me a PlayStation back then. They had like their registration info, um, and we would get. This is back in the day, like late '90s. Like this is some weird shit you don't see anymore. We would have demos mailed to our house from Sony PlayStation for upcoming games, and I remember being like a kid in, in the mail. There was a demo there for Spyro the Dragon, and I remember playing it. And, and I have this like really like episodic memory of running around in this bowl in like a Spyro homeworld chasing one of those dudes that has like an egg and you gotta like hold square down and like ram them or fire them and uh I'm like dude this game's awesome right you know this, this game's sick like and, and again like it's it's like that it's Siphon Filter it's it's, it's uh, Gran Turismo it's Need for Speed those are like my early like PlayStation memories um and then 1999 uh Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage comes out and Again, that's the first Spyro game I ever played, right? I think that demo was Spyro the Dragon, the first one. Um, I loved Ripto's Rage. It, to date, is my favorite Spyro game from the original trilogy. Uh, I think it has the best of all of the worlds. Um, the best of one, the best of three, is all packed into two. And I'll talk more about that as we go on. Um, Spyro 2 is my favorite one. And, and it's been in the news the past couple of days here. Uh, speculation about Toys for Bob and if they're going to make Spyro 4. I'm really hoping it's just a simple platformer like these first three are. Uh, great soundtrack, uh, great protagonist in Spyro, great NPCs, Alora, Hunter, the Professor, Moneybags. We fucking hate Moneybags, but we also kind of love Moneybags because he just plays like the heel as like a, like a WWE character. Um, and there's always a great antagonist. Um, so that's what I'm hoping for. I know I, I hear from uh, Canadian guy that it's an early development uh, as of like January 2024. Um, but goddamn, did they do such a great job with the Reignited trilogy that came out in like November 2018? Um, and I'm so ecstatic, so pumped whenever they they did this Reignited trilogy. Uh, I don't even know now. What, what what would it be like five and a half years ago? Like it sounds insane. Like it's been that long ago, but. They did such a good job putting such a fresh coat of paint on these games that came out in the late 90s, early 2000s. They stayed true to what these games mean. They're platformers. 
uh, with a great soundtrack and great protagonists, great NPCs, and they just did a great job remastering the game. They didn't try to do too much. They didn't try to like reinvent the wheel. They just put a fresh coat of paint on this game, uh, which is what we're going to see here. This is from 2018. It's the Reignited Trilogy. We're going to do Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. It's my favorite. We're going to play Summer Force, the first Homeworld. Um, and I have all the faith in the world The Toys for Bob is going to make a great Spyro 4, if that's in fact true, that they are going to do that. Um, I have all the faith in the world in them. I think, I think they do a great job here with this. And, and they, they keep it true to the roots. They really do a great job. And not many developers do that out there. But they know what the fans love. They know what the fans want. And goddamn. Uh, I, I, this just, if, if everyone out there is a PlayStation 1 fan that was back there back in the late 90s, early 2000s, and remembers this game, uh, can truly, truly appreciate what Spyro was. Um, so, again, 20 plus years later, Spyro is still a big name out there. And... Hopefully there's more to come with Spyro. Uh, but I just wanted to do something different tonight. Bubbles, you know, something chill tonight. You know, we're not out there slaying dragons or cyclops or, well, <laughs> trying to slay dragons or cyclops. Um, going to do something a little more relaxed tonight. Uh, going to do Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. All right, let's go. Let's do this shit. What a game. <laughs> no. No, not getting railed by Griffins. Not in the plans tonight. Is this rain ever gonna stop? I've forgotten what the sun looks like. <laughs> well, we do have a dragon already in the video. Somewhere warm, <laughs> somewhere sunny. Dragon Shores, yeah. I haven't been there since we kicked Nasty Nork's butt. How about it, Spyro? Nasty Nork being the Spyro the Dragon, Spyro 1 antagonist. Pulling the chat up, Bubbles. Is it working, Professor? Almost. Just a few more adjustments to these. Favorite insect. Again? They're a great insect. Maybe this isn't such a good idea. <clears throat> You're getting plenty of them here in this game. More angry. Here's some great NPCs in this game. Hunter, Alora, the Professor. Well, you saw the Love book. them. They have claws like this and teeth like this, and they can spit fire like this. <laughs> They sound much more dangerous than Ripto. That's exactly the point. A dragon is our Hey, that'll be useful in the uh the speed worlds here. It's working. It's working. I forget what they're called, but they're like the the ice like the uh speed trial uh worlds that they do in Spyro. It'll take 60 mile per hour. Whoa, rough landing. Hi, which way's the uh, beach? beach? Huh? Hey, stop staring. <laughs> Haven't you, Have you guys, guys ever seen, seen a dragon, dragon before? <laughs> You're a dragon? You got a problem with that pussy cat? Hunter's got some nerve saying that considering how cowardly he is. Well, oh, here he comes. Well, someone forgot to invite me to the party. Were you trying to keep something from me? A dragon? You brought a dragon to Avalar? About to kick your ass, buddy. Crush, kill it, kill it! Go, you imbecile! You ate my scepter! Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till he shits it out, I guess, my man. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right, laters, dude. We'll be catching up with you later. Gonna shove that scepter up your ass. And we have to get rid of him. He's causing all sorts of trouble around here, but I haven't got time to explain. Here, take this magic guide to Avalar. He is. He's such a dumbo. <laughs> he's a complete imbecile. They're all dumb. Like Ripto, stupid. Crush and Gulp are stupid. There goes Alora. How do we get ourselves into these messes, pal? Hunter, the Professor, three great additions to Spyro 2 that were not in Spyro the Dragon. Spy that, that would be like my chief complaint with Spyro the Dragon is that it just doesn't have a lot of NPCs, not a lot of companions there that you can bond with through like out your story and your adventure. They add those three that I just spoke about, plus another one or two uh, in Riptoast Rage. 
All right, here we are. First world. We're in Glimmer. Again, you're just hearing this beautiful, beautiful mesmerizing soundtrack by the one and only Stuart Copeland, uh, drummer of the police. Uh, it, it's just, again, it's it's one of the best soundtracks, I think, ever in, in video games. Like, all three, you know, the trilogies um, from the Insomniac games. I think he went on and did the one after Insomniac games, too. Can't remember which one that is, uh, but he did the soundtrack for that as well. Uh, but Jesus Christ, just listen to it. It's, it's, I don't know, synonymous with the game, in my opinion. I hear this music, I think Spyro. All right, let's go. All right, Pogo. Unfortunately for us, a mob of lizards just showed up. Oh, dude, I sure can. Good night, buddy. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be very different than anything else we've played on the channel to date. Where we've played The Last of Us, where we've played Alan Wake One, Alan Wake Two. Um. Oh, I can still shoot my fireballs because I beat the game. I. 100% uh, percented one of my playthroughs on Rift Rage. I'm not mad about it. It's fine. It's a nice little wrinkle, I guess, for like 100%ing the game. Yeah, it is. You're right, Bubbles. It is very kid-like. I mean, that's what it was. Like, I guess the target audience back when the game came out. Um, but, you know what? Sometimes you have to switch it up and play a little something lighthearted every once in a while. To switch up the tone, switch up the mood a little bit. Which is certainly what this game does. And again, with it in the news recently, with all the Spyro 4 buzz and Toys for Bob buzz, uh, ever since they split from Activision. Um, yeah, yeah, I took a little break from Dragon's Dogma. I think the next two Dragon's Dogma, uh, or the next couple Dragon's Dogma uh, recordings I'm going to do, I'm going to not do them live i'm gonna actually like just play through the game understand the game a little bit more understand the mechanics of it and just you know uh, all that stuff and just make recordings of it and edit it because it's just it's taken a long time to get through it and i don't want you know some of these playthroughs to just be like insanely long so I'm going to go through these next couple Dragon's Dogma videos and just like edit them and put all of the highlights in from like great moments with combat, uh, maybe funny moments, um, story moments, and in the next couple videos that come out for Dragon's Dogma, I'm going to I'm going to put them out as actual recordings and not live stream them. Also it gives me an opportunity to like understand the game more, um, so I'm not wandering around like an absolute dipshit. So that's my Dragon's Dogma plan. I'm a friend of Alora's. And What's up, Zoe? Me to help you out. Thank you. I know you're gonna zap me and save my game. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this guy's cooked. Later, lizard dude. <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're never distracting me, bub Bubbles. You're actually helping me out a lot. This dude's cooked. Wink. But those are gonna be my next Dragon's Dogma videos. We're gonna actually record them and edit them, and I'll upload them like that. I'm not gonna live stream them. I will live stream Dragon's Dogma again. It's just gonna be after these next couple of videos where I'm in a position where, um, you know, I understand the game more and I'm not like taking two hours to go from point A to point B. So, all right, we're not gonna be able to do this quest right now because we can't climb. To climb these ladders. It looks like you are too. After you learn to climb, come back to Glimmer to see me. All right, brother, I'll be back for you, Whiskers. Yeah, I am pretty short right now. This guy right here is going to help me grow a couple inches. There he is, that bastard right there. Money bags. Um, the heel of the Spyro games. Yeah, no, I'll definitely, like, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll catch everybody up for sure. Again, I just, the live streaming, the, my, just real quick here before we continue, I'll just talk about Dragon's Dogma for a second. I love Dragon's Dogma. I'm having a hell of a time playing it. Um, it's just... You know, you're learn when I'm playing these live for the first time, I'm learning them on the spot. You know, I'm not playing by myself for three or four or five or six hours and, you know, understanding the game before I go on in front of, you know, when I before I broadcast it. Um, so a lot of the moments are me, like, going through, like, the item menu and, and learning all the, like, the different things, like, trying to find, like, the, 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 the tent 
and the lantern and upgrading my sword that's boring shit i feel like for the most part for most people whenever they watch so the next couple of videos i'm gonna edit them and record them and upload them as like vods or whatever uh before i live stream again just so i get a better understanding of the game you know i think it's probably a better visual experience but i will live stream again it's just the next couple are gonna be vods so. all right what's up money bags you fucking heal everyone's talking about well Dragon or not, I'm a yeah, that yeah, that's a small too. fee to open the bridge. Yeah, exactly. You I'll live stream again. Cross. Dragon's Dogma. Again, like I said, I just the next couple are gonna be recordings as opposed to um, live streams, just so I get a better understanding of it and I can like edit a bunch of the dry stuff out, like the traveling and stuff. Even though the traveling's fun, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's funner than most games. Um but goddamn, we're, 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 we're like at the very beginning of the game and I'm like seven hours in and it's just like taking forever for me to get to point A to point B. So I'm going to fast forward a lot of this. All right, here's Moneybags. Moneybags is the heel of the Spyro uh, trilogy. Um, he is constantly just sitting in front of whatever like crossroads you're at, uh, holding a money bag. And he is usually like wafting some sort of like insanely high price tag to either cross a bridge or turn a stone or to teach you some sort of lesson like uh, swimming underwater or climbing or using your horns to like crush stuff. Uh, that's what money bags does. You accrue all these gems, you think you're doing good, and then this dude's there to just absolutely crush your piggy bank, basically is what he does. We're gonna pay our 100 gems, right? We have 164, we worked really hard for those 164 gems. We're gonna give 100 of those to money bags right now just so we can cross this fucking bridge. That's pretty much what money bags is all about. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. That Spyro, was it? You can now use the bridge. He offers some comedic to relief too. He he when it comes down to it, it's just a heal. When you have even Yeah, even more gems. I know, dude. You just want to keep robbing me. <laughs> he is he's a complete scammer. He's a complete scammer. Whoop! Good night. Yeah, that's what money bags is. He's a scammer. You're gonna learn all of your skills from him, like climbing, um, swimming underwater, uh, using crush or skull bash. I think is what it's technically called. Um, that's who you learn it from. Is money bags, and he's always, always, always gonna have a price tag associated with it. And then he's also gonna be inside the levels too, right? It's not just gonna be on the outside teaching you skills. He's gonna be on these levels, uh, whether it's crossing a bridge or using a like, you know, a tank that's like uh, equipped to take on like bites from a shark, um, you know, that gets you through like point A to point B through like shark infested waters. Like, yeah, he's gonna put a price tag on it. That's just what he does. Like he's gonna put this stupid toll over you. To get a good look around, and there's Zoe. Yeah, we're good, Zoe. I got this. Thank you, girl. Whoop. But I'm pulling for a Spyro 4. It certainly seems likely that we're going to get a Spyro 4. Um, hey, Twitchy. Please take this talisman of glimmer as a sign of our gratitude. Alright, talisman. I think there's 14 that we need to get here in Spyro 2 to unlock all of the bosses that we're gonna need to fight to get to Ripto and to whoop his candy ass up and down Avalar. So we got one, there's one. Now it's not all about Talisman. There's gonna be like mini games too inside the uh, these worlds here that you're about to see in a couple minutes. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there was more to gather in Glimmer before I jumped through that portal, but uh, we're going to have to go back in there when we learn how to climb. And, uh, you know, it, it, I don't think we're going to learn it, though, until Autumn Plains. So we're going to have to come back to Glimmer. It's no Chuck, yeah. Spyro's a good protagonist. You're right, Bubbles. And there's Ripto. We didn't get a chance to introduce ourselves before. My name is Alora. Uh, hi, I'm Spyro. What are you, some kind of goat? <laughs> I'm a fawn, you dork. What are you looking at, oh, dude? Sorry. Adjust your gaze, my friend. Yeah, they gave me a souvenir too. They called it a talisman. They gave you a talisman? Yeah. What, is it special? I just stuck it in the guidebook you gave me. 
Well, there are 14 talismans in Avalar. There we go. That's right. Magical. If I can collect enough I'm glad I remembered that. To defeat Ripto. Hunter, where have you been? Oh, I uh, g got a little lost. Spyro's gonna help us collect the talismans. I am? He is. <laughs> Look, he does. There's no way you can get to Dragon Shores right like a Rex Ryan of uh, Avalar. Have taken over the castle here in the Summer Forest. You're going to have to go to Avalar's world and convince the inhabitants <clears throat> to give you their talisman. You can keep them in your guidebook. Hey, I could do that. Why doesn't the dragon just torch Ripto? Not really, Hunter, Hunter. You can't even keep track of your running shoes. Yeah, that's right, How can dude. We trust you with 14 talismans. <laughs> if you come across any orbs, they're important too. But I'll tell you about them later. Yeah. Okay, no problem. I'll collect a few talismans, give Ripto the old hot foot, and be in Dragon Shores by lunchtime. Yeah, and, and that's the thing that real quick too, <clears throat> why I like Spyro 2 more than I like Spyro the Dragon. Spyro 2, first and foremost, is my favorite of the trilogy. I think it has ultimately like the best of all worlds from like the bookend games like Spyro the Dragon and Spyro Year of the Dragon, one and three. Where Spyro the Dragon's like really like stripped down. There's the home world, there's the antagonist, and you go into the portals and you get through like similar to like what we just did with Glimmer, and you move on to the next one, and then you fight the boss at the end, and yada 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 yada. There's not a lot of NPCs, there's not an Allura, there's not a hunter, there's not the professor, there's not money bags, there's none of them in Spyro the Dragon. There's no mini games inside the portals from what I remember. Um, so it's very like base, right? Now you get the Spyro 2 where you start to see these like mini games inside the portals implemented where you grab the orbs, right? Like the challenges inside the game where if I didn't very like clumsily and stupidly just walk back through that portal at the end of the glimmer, you would have seen me do one or two of those. Uh, then you get the Spyro 3, Year of the Dragon. In my opinion, they kind of like overdo it and overcook it where there's a lot of mini games and then there's like the NPCs who actually turn into like playable characters like Agent Zero, uh, Sergeant Bird, there's the Yeti, there's Sheila. Like, you're playing levels where you're actually, like, playing them instead of Spyro. And for me, that just starts to get to be, like, a little bit too much. I kind of like them just as NPCs and not actual playable characters. Um, but you start to see that in Spyro 3. Again, I still love Spyro 3. It's a great game. It just starts to be a little bit too much. So that's why, for me, Spyro 2 is, like, that perfect, like, little dose of NPCs, um, mini games inside the portals and, you know, everything else that comes with it. So, not to mention it's the first Spyro game that I ever played. I, sp I played Ripto's Rage before I ever played Spyro the Dragon, so it just has that special place in my heart. If you're wondering why I got that Firebolt, I have the Firebolt because I 100 percent of the game before, so it just carries over. Give me that life. Listen to that beautiful, sweet, serene, tranquil music. So good. Let me just turn it up. I'm gonna turn it for my own my own pleasure. I don't obviously know where the button's at without looking at it. Alright, we can't jump down here and swim yet. You can see all the gems beneath us, but we don't know how to swim underwater yet. Right? Look at me. Right now. I know it's square. But I didn't pay my price to money bags yet. Therefore, I'm not allowed to swim underwater. Right? We gotta go pay that cheapskate motherfuck. Uh, I don't know. Four or five hundred gems here down the road a little bit before I'm able to swim underwater. So, we'll get there. Alright, Alora, What's up? Spyro, this is the home world called Summer Forest. There are portals to many of the Avalar worlds around here. Unfortunately, Ripto has taken over the castle, and we need your help. <laughs> Fuck Ripto. Start by retrieving the talismans from Whoop his candy ass. The dude's like one and a half foot tall. All right, Alora, you got it. What do you call her a goat? <laughs> Spyro called her a goat. <laughs> Dude, you can't call her a goat. It's just a slap in the face. Yeah, we're gonna get out of here. Whoop. All right. Can't even keep this scepter, man. It's so sad. Here's that frog. That frog just got blasted in outer space. Yeah, 
Yep, she just blasts these frogs away or whatever they are. Sheep. Sheep or frogs, typically. You kill enough of them, you're going to get the uh, upgrade to enhance your life. Therefore, if you get a game over, it's not the end of the world. Did I get them all? Yeah, I think so. All right. Whoop. Very beautiful looking world. There goes some sheep. Blowing him off into, into smithereens. There's money bags. First little thing he's going to offer us here is to learn how to swim underwater. Sparks, the dragonfly following you around is your health indicator. Yeah, I know that, Zoe. Thank you so much. Um, we got to swim underwater to advance. But there are a couple worlds here before we get to that point. Idle Springs. Yeah. <laughs> There's always like a ton of sheep. Yeah, it must be where they get it from. There's Colossus and there's Idle Springs. Some of my favorites. Uh, before we get there, we're going to go ahead here and there's got a orb challenge up above with our guy, Hunter. It's a 10 point gem there, that little magenta colored one. Boom, split him. Got a little gem here for Hunter. Hi, Spyro. First chance at an orb. Let's we'll see what Let's they're all about. It to a test. See if you can get up this first step. Press the jump button and hold it down to get more. All right, I think I can do that, Hunter. Okay, not bad. Now to make this next jump, you'll have to glide. Press the jump button, then press jump again. I don't think Hunter shoots a single person or enemy distance. or critter in this game with the bow and arrow, but he's got it slung over his back as if he's like ready to use it like Legolas would in <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> All right. Nice job. Now try to do a hover. Press the jump button, then press jump again to glide. When you reach the no. end of your glide, <laughs> press the action button to hover. Yeah, he hover can't do it, man. Extra height and distance. Hunter, Hunter has no right shooting that bow and arrow. It's funny, though, that he's got it slung over his back. Like, in all reality, Hunter should be an awesome NPC that should be able to help you out a lot. But he, he does fuck all, really, in all reality. He's kind of just like a doofus. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's, a, he's a doofus. <laughs> Very good. Now for the hardest leap of all. Yeah, he's basically just there to be like, you know, that NPC that challenges you like in a game or a map or a port inside of a portal to like a little mini game there and gives you an orb if you're successful against them. That's basically all he is. Wow, you're a pretty good athlete. <clears throat> if I hadn't lost my yeah, act like you're surprised, man. You on for real. For now. All right, give me that orb, buddy. I love that he's just like chilling with an orb. Alora's like hawking him like to save her life to like defeat Ripto, therefore like in like Hunter is just like hanging on to one. For whatever reason. Alright. Let's go in here. Idle Springs. One of my favorites. Here we go. breaking the bow yeah it's just like he should he should be slinging that thing left and right and he just doesn't he doesn't do it ever it's just like there's a prop hunter does not shoot his bow and arrow from what i can remember Spiral. foreman bob we our guy come to life. They've locked us out of our temple. i went to hawaii one time and there are tiki everywhere and it made me think of this level it made me think of idle springs and spyro too <laughs> So there's a bunch more gems underneath the water there. We're going to have to come back here whenever we learn how to swim underwater. So in all reality, I probably should have waited to do this level. Because then we have to come back anyway. Oh my god. Whoop. 
All right, he's gonna go up there. He's gonna unlock that door, and we're gonna carry on here. <laughs> I know, for real. The locals definitely don't want to hear about like some white dude like talking about like how like their their island reminds them of Spyro too. <laughs> oh man, Hawaii is a beautiful place though. If you ever get the opportunity to go, highly recommend. Went to Maui, beautiful, beautiful place. Whoa, baby. Bum 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 bum. Good night. Bum 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 bum. Okay, we grab all the gems here. Think so. All right, let's roll. What? Those metal shields are making enemies invulnerable to your flame attack. If you press and hold the charge button. Sayonara, brother. Once again, just listen to that music. It's just so damn good. It's so amazing. This guy's done. Go ahead. But yeah, there's just tiki. Oh yeah. Oh dude, they get smoked. Oh. I didn't appreciate that, my friend. Um there's tiki everywhere here. Alright, let's get our as you can see, whenever we took a hit there our our uh, dragonfly's health went down a little bit. Gold means he is top notch, ready to rock and roll. He gets hit with the blue, that means he's down a notch. And I think he goes down like green. I forget what's after green. Oh. That guy's just sitting there conking his head. He's a friendly. Just beating himself in the head like a fucking doofus. Alright, Zoe, grab me those gems, please. <laughs> He's just sitting there conking himself in the head. This guy is too. What the fuck are these people doing? I have some questions about these guys, Bubbles. They're just sitting there beating themselves in the head. Hey there, buddy. What's up? How you doing? Yeah, they definitely like liven a lot of the NPCs up, like, from a visual perspective in it. They're all like pretty much just triangles in the original game because this game came out in 1999. That's pretty much all what characters were. They're just triangles, different variations of triangles. Um, now they're just, you know, more realized. This guy's just beating himself in the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Okay. There we go. And we're at the end. Spyro, you're Foreman Max. If you that guy. A permanent job, we've got a place for you. Thank you, Max. I'm just gonna take that talisman down, my friend. All right, we're gonna move on. We'll do a couple challenges here. I think that's one down there. No? I forget how you even activate it. I clearly missed some gems though. I mean, this is one we're gonna have to come back to anyway if you want like 100% it just because of all the gems we missed underwater at the beginning. But I'm not like worried about 100%ing this. I already 100% of the game before, so I'm kinda just fucking around to be honest with you. This isn't something I'm even concerned about. Like, hey, we're gonna go in and, 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 you know beat the game here on the channel. I'm just fucking around tonight. Just wanted to play some Spyro. Came up in the news recently. Was looking for something a little more low-key. Um, and it just made sense to just play something a little different right now. So. Yep. 
Yeah, you gotta play those games from like your childhood sometimes, where you just, you know, chill. A nice little platformer can do that for you though. All right, we're gonna go down here next. Here's an orb challenge. We're gonna knock these candy asses off their uh, pedestal. After I get these gems, Let's get these gems up real quick. All right. Where's our girl at? Here she is. It's fabulous to see you, Spyro. Yep, I'll help you. Let's so go get through the supercharge and blow them off the. Uh, here we go. Oh boy, missed one already. Missed one. <laughs> I keep missing that one. Okay. <laughs> Went through it 20 times, but we got it. Look at that. The hula girl's ring dance blew up that idol like a Roman candle. Now I can pursue that dancing career I've dreamed of. Nice coconut, or Stella. It could help you go play. JK. Hey, and there's our orb. Okay. The girls are loving it. They're happy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing what uh, some rain dancing can do. I might like try to like implement that into my own life. Let's see if that can just raise my spirits, maybe. Mentally, spiritually, all of the above. Might do all of it. All right, we'll move on. Like I said, I'm not worried about 100%ing stuff. Okay, yeah, they're buddies now, maybe. I don't know. Good for them. Hey, okay. Classes, let's go. Hey, big yeti, big yeti. I <laughs> just like I, I can like still like hear like all of like the weird sounds of this level inside my head like I was ten years old again. <laughs> You'll hear it. A Yeti has been Ah, brother Harry. This is like the same dude from Lytle Springs, except he's just like a different color. If you talk to the other brothers, they. All right, my friend. Thank you, Brother Harry. May peace be with you. Oh, holy shit. I think I missed him still. Is he still alive? No, I got him. <laughs> Goodbye to that penguin. Alright, Arnie, shut the fuck up and open the door. <clears throat> I know, right? 
nothing. That's a good point. As you can see here, you got big on hockey sticks. You'll start to see this later on in this level. They have a big love and obsession over hockey in uh, Colossus. Which I can respect. See? Boom, boom, boom. Who needs a key? All right, Clive, shut the fuck up and raise the goddamn platform. Enemies like God damn it, Zoe. Too big to be charged. Let's go. Oh my god, I got fucked. Fucked. I'm getting fucked up and down. Get him again. Uh, -na 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 -na. I'm gonna power that bitch up. Yeah, I know, Zoe. I know, I know. I've played the game a million fucking times. Shut up. Missed all those gems down there. Hop up. Hop up. <laughs> like, the, the song in this level throughout is just like some dude just humming away. Like, yodeling. Borderline yodeling. Curtis. Curtis says, look what I can do. Yeah, I can lift the fucking elevator. What a man. Thank you, Curtis. Do, 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 do. Alright, we're gonna hit that elevator up. What are you going to say to me now? Remember Hunter's advice. You will glide farthest if you press the jump button. I know, I know, I know. Have you not seen me fly to this point? Have you not seen me just like stunting all over these fucking platforms here with my triangle acumen? Don't even need it there. I'm flying downwards. I don't even need the triangle button. Get that penguin. Get that penguin. <laughs> Just sent him to outer space. Goodbye. Goodbye. The little wisps? We're at. What do you mean right here? Oh, so whenever you kill, like, an enemy, it goes towards whatever superpower portal is in that level, for this, for example. So when you see an 11 there, whenever you kill 11 enemies, you're going to get the, uh, the power that this super portal um, uses. So whenever you kill, like, those rams and shit like that, uh, it, goes, it goes to this portal right here. And then whenever you get the 11 kills, you're going to be able to use the superpower portal. Which we should be close to, by the way. Thought we were close to that. Even though I'm a vegetarian, I think you should torch that Yeti. You want me to torch that guy? Okay. Now, if you don't have that superpower firebolt like I have for beating the game, you're not going to be able to blow that little uh, cask up. You got to light that rocket that's right, right there. I wonder if it lets me light it. Oh, it does. Oh shit! It's going to come right on top of me. See? 
Yeah. Alright. Oh, let's see, we got 11 now. We got 11. Alright. That portal's gonna be active now. It's gonna be active as fuck. Alright, let's go back up to it. And the portal is going to be a little trampoline type deal. Alright. Just gonna put me up to this next part of the level. Throw you up here, get more gems, talk to the other NPCs. Which there is one up ahead here that I recall. Our, our good buddy. Hold on, let me make sure there's nothing else here. The professor. There he is. Uh oh. We got an issue here, boys. We got an issue. Thank goodness you scared that evil spirit away. But now it will hide in the statue. Thank goodness you, you scared that evil spirit away, Spyro. I'm sure you would chase it away for good. Hmm. I will try that, Mr. Professor. Ah, uh, flame ten green statues. The difficulty's three out of five stars. We'll give you one orb for your efforts. Alright. Let's go. The professor's a good guy. He just always he's he's not he's sometimes there to help, he's sometimes there to just give you a quest. But he's usually got the goods on him. Uh, meaning an orb. So, we gotta go and kill these statues. There's one. There's two. We'll make quick work of this. Oh. I didn't do anything to the Yeti. Let's see if I can hit this guy. Long range, long range, long range. Sniper style. Got him. We'll come back the way we, in which we came up. And see if we can grab any more of these uh, statues. This little zephyr here, this little whirlwind will always throw you back up. That's all that does. Just places you up to where you need to go. No, get him! Fuck! Alright, weigh him down. Do 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 do. Ah, fuck. Ah, screw it. Boom. All right. Wait for this guy to come back down. We're halfway there. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go out this way. Let's take a look out here. That one's already done. Let's go back to the beginning and see if we had any anyone at the beginning here. Ah, here we go. There we go. Six. There might be one more at the very beginning. Yeah, here's one at least. Oh, there's two. Alright, two more. Two left, that's it. Alright. None here. Let's go back. I think it's gonna be closer to where we got the assignment. Always look above. Nothing above. Alright, it's cool. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate that. Looking out for my save status in case I fall short. It's gonna be after that right there. I don't think there's anybody back here. Alright, we're gonna go up here. Keep the train moving here. Just some, like, decrepit ramps over there. I don't know what purpose they served once upon a time, but... Something, uh, I don't know. Ah, here's a guy. Alright, one left. One left and we get the orb from the Professor. Love the Professor, love Allura, love Hunter. Love what they bring to the mix here on uh, Riptos Rage. Again, like I said before, Inspire the Dragon. Like, there's just no NPC presence at all. There's no Allura, there's no Professor, there's no Hunter. There's no, uh, there's no even a money bags. And like I said before, money bags is a goddamn scoundrel. Uh, but, you know, he's a heel though. He's at least fun to have around. 
done, Spyro. You've scared the Well done, Spyro. Away. Why don't you take this? I borrowed it from the temple. They don't need it. No, we need it. As you'll find out down the road. The orbs help out just like the talismans do. They're gonna give you more power, unlocking doors and progressing the story. So All right, we're going to go over here. We'll get the other orb, uh, which is the hockey game, which is one of the funner orb challenges in Spyro 2, in my opinion. All right, nothing there. Yeah, you got a good hockey game down here. Pick all these gems up first. Alrighty. Two orb challenge, I forgot. This is like a double double. Beat him once, beat him twice type of deal here. We're gonna do both. Uh, brother Kip well, Brother Kip! Tell him to lace up, brother Kip. I'm ready to go, buddy. Sport. Yes, please. Two oh my god, two stars. Get the fuck out of here, brother Kip. Christ. Look at this clown coming out here. An absolute slug of a human being. What do I gotta do? How many goals I gotta score? I don't even remember. <laughs> I'm talking shit. I'm not even... Oh god, you gotta swallow it. Jesus Christ. Did he just score a goal on me? Oh no, apparently it doesn't matter. Alright. Uh, uh, uh. Corner. Oh, buddy! Buddy! You can't give up a fucking rebound like that, buddy. What are you doing? Corner. Just hit the corners. He's never gonna save the corners. This guy's not exactly more Tambrodor. Dominic Hashik. Come on, Spyro. Grab that puck, buddy. Long distance this guy, I'm gonna snipe this guy. Take him to the left, take him to the left. Whoop! Ah, uh, nope, nope, nope. Oh my god, I should have had that. Alright, we're gonna get him long distance again. I think you probably just need five, so I should probably not fuck around here. Yeah, I think you just need five. Alright. We won't screw around. Come on, Spyro. Hit the turbo boost. I guess he doesn't have that on ice. Lean him to the left. Lean him to the left. Lean him to the left. Nope. 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 Wow. That was horrible. Gonna need to be a little bit better than that. Post him. Well done. Have this. Would you like to try a game of one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, I would. I would like to try a game of one-on-one, -on -one, Brother Kip. The first to score five goals wins. Now, I'm gonna fuck your guy up. That's fine. Send them all out. <laughs> wow, dude, your goalie sucks, bro. He got no fucking, like, acrobatics to him at all. I'll put your guy on his ass every time. Oh my god, I am fucking you up. I am fucking you up. Oh no. Come on, guy. Oh, dude. Oh! I was gonna say, my keeper played it to me, like, decently. Nope, 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 nope. Wow. Oh my god, did I just score my own net? Did I score my own fucking net? I did score my own net. You fucking idiot. <laughs> my guy, my guy. Scored on my own net. Terrible. Did that on purpose though, just to give him a goal. Didn't want it to be like too embarrassing for him. Put 
Play me. Play me. Play me. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ, man. I can't even get, like, control the puck. I, do. I cannot kick the puck to save my life right now. All right, here we go. All right, we're, cr we're cooking. All right, holy shit. That took way too long. Whoop, whoop. Oh my, he hit me good. Get in there. Oh, posting in. Let's do it. Game. No, that was four. Shit. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, brother. My friend. Alright, nothing you even go back and play against them if you ever want to go back and play against them. It's it's fun. It's just a little fun little mini game. We're out of here though. No? No? Uh down here? Okay. He was Brother Ned. I guess he was Brother Edard of Halstock. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I was Alright, thanks, Brother Ned. Just give me the goddamn talisman so I can move on. Alright, we gone. Fucking killed that guy. <laughs> Just cooked, absolutely cooked that guy. That dude's gonna be on the loose now. He's gonna be a fugitive. Fugitive of Colossus. Alright, let's visit our pal money bags. That's where we're gonna have to go here um, to advance the story. He's gonna absolutely rob us blind of all the 901 gems that we have. So. Hello there, Spyro. Would you like to learn to swim underwater? I suppose I could um, you a small for... fee. <clears throat> a small fee. Or a modest fee. You motherfucker, dude. Yeah, go ahead, take 500 gems to teach me how to, like, press square. Great. Okay. Son of a bitch. When you jump in the water, you can use your left... Yeah, I know how, man. How do you don't go to, like, teach me? All right, so here we are. We're underwater. <laughs> That's all it really is. can bang some uh, glasses up down here and yada yada yada. Um, before you forget though, I do think it is prudent to go back to the beginning and go down here real quick. There's an orb that we'll be, uh, would have been unable to get before we learned how to swim underwater. Which is over here. Follow me. Alright. Let's come down here. Uh, grab these real quick. Oh god. What am I doing here? Uh, there you are. Whoop. I'm fucking stuck. Get this motherfucker. There you go. There's one. 
that next one. There we go. All right, now we can go down. Go down, go down. Dizzy as shit after that. All right, hit all the gems up. And... Boom. Oop. Beep. Not that. Just rang my own buzzer. All the way to the top, to the top. And hey, look, there's a gem up here. How about that? Or an orb, I should say. Alright, cool. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome here. Thank you, Bubbles. That's good news. Appreciate that. It's always nice to hear. It's always very much appreciated. So, everyone that's a new subscriber, I appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you. Whether you've been around from the start or, or, or new or somewhere in between, again, I thank you. Spending even a second watching me fuck around here and play video games. I thank you guys. All right, hit the buzzer. Hit another buzzer. We're gonna have an orb up. Uh, thank you. To help us oh, and keep collecting those orbs too. Right. I know. I know. I know, Zoe. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see it from down here, but there is another orb up there. Ah, yes. See it bouncing up there. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. We gotta learn how to climb first. We're not gonna learn how to climb until uh, autumn plains. Right? So, we will have to come back. Alright, let's grab some of this shit here. Again, if you're wondering why I'm shooting fire bolts here, it's because I beat the game before 100% of the game, way back in the day when the game first came out, back in fall of 2018. I think it was supposed to come out in September 2018, and then it got pushed back to November. I can't remember if it had anything to do with Red Dead Redemption 2 coming out, but Red Dead came out right around the same time. I think they said they had some sort of delay they had to push the game back for, but... Um, Putting your game out at the same time as a Rockstar game, let alone a Red Dead Redemption 2, is probably not a great thing. Uh, so they moved it back to November, I believe. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, it was something I was looking forward to for an insanely long time. I've been a Spyro fan since back in the day in the PlayStation 1 days, late 90s, some of the earliest memories I had playing uh, Spyro. Uh, so when they announced that Toys for Bob was going to do a reignited trilogy here where we have Spire of the Dragon, Ripto's Rage, and Year of the Dragon on here, I was ecstatic for it, and they did a goddamn amazing job. And, and I hope they, I hope, and this is the reason why we're playing this tonight, because Spyro is a little relevant right now with the Spyro 4 buzz going around out there. I pray to the gods out there, the gaming gods, that they do a phenomenal job with Spyro 4. All right, let's talk to Elora. I saw something shiny at the top of this wall. You could probably... I don't know how to climb right now, Laura. That's kind of an issue. All right, we're going to go into Huracost because I think Huracost is just an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal level. These dudes are about to get smoked by, by my firebolt, by the way. I appreciate you, Bubbles. I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate all the time that you spend here. You spend an insane amount of time here. And, again, I'm incredibly thankful for that. And, again, like I've said before, I appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. We keep going, baby. The channel keeps going. We keep moving. Zap. Gear grinders, but now they've set up force fields to separate us. God damn them gear grinders. Diodes, you can use them to turn off the force fields. I think there's a diode around here somewhere. Hmm, I, I think I there's a diode around here somewhere. Hmm. Hey, that's right there. This dude's about to get smoked. Good night. Um. Hey, I hear you, man. It's always nice to sit down and talk to people about video games. I don't have a lot of that in my life, to be completely honest with you. Uh, so to be able to come on here and just be able to talk video games with, with you and, you know, with anyone else that comes on and wants to talk video games, I, you know, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. You know what I mean? The channel, like, just to come on here and be able to make stuff that people actually like and want to talk to video games about. And, again, that's, that's what I'm looking for. 
the feedback, the commentary. Again, it's, it's it means a lot. So I appreciate anyone that, that watches or spends a moment of their time doing this, checking the videos out, and um, you know, talking, watching, liking, you know, whatever. Just involved in the feedback, I appreciate it. So thank you guys. I really mean it means a lot. Um, there's our diode. Again, I love this map. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's all good, Bubbles. It's all good. Um, just look at this map. It's a beauty. Got a rainbow in here. Got the beautiful, like, electricity uh, jolts crossing the screen here. Once again, as always, the music. Stuart Copeland, phenomenal. Phenomenal soundtrack, one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game before. Uh, again, it's literally a dude, it's a drummer. A drummer for the police, like Sting. Like a band that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Made the fucking soundtrack for this game in the 90s. They're like, they approached a drummer from a rock band that's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and said, hey, can you make a soundtrack for these video games? And he makes a fucking all-time soundtrack. One of the best soundtracks I've ever heard in a video game. Yeah, that's just what this guy goes on and does. Like, it's it's impressive as hell. Good night. Smoked. Smoked. Diode City. Let's go. Very peaceful. It's like so peaceful and it's like gently raining. And it's just got that beautiful backdrop there that like really like picturesque just cloud background. And naturally the ocean or whatever that is in a rainbow. Back in the day, like go and like check out like the original version of this. It's not <laughs> obviously as you can probably imagine, it's not as detailed as this. It's not as detailed as this, but it was still beautiful. And the soundtrack was still fucking awesome. There is actually two, if you ever wanted to go and look look at the audio, I'll just show you guys real quick. If you like, wanted to go and check this out, go to options, go to sound, go to uh, music. There's the original music, and there's also the reignited music. So, like, remaster the music even. <laughs> I know, for real, right? That's right. Dude, Chuck Canyon's not afraid. As I said before, he's not afraid to pull that Canon DSLR out and just start snapping. But yeah. Fun platformer. What else is there to say? Peaceful, scenic, serene, tranquil. Pick your uh, adjective. He's a little too photogenic. Hey, the man's not afraid to show his legs off either. You gotta, you gotta appreciate that. <laughs> Chuck Canyon, not afraid to show his legs off. Not afraid to pull the the camera out. Check out Dragon's Dogma. That's the main character, Chuck Canyon. Dude's a beast. There will be more Dragon's Dogma coming out, guys. Taking a little detour tonight. Chuck Canyon's Canyon Crashers. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Chuck Canyon wheel to cannon. DSLR camera. Split him. Little button action. Button action. Hey, more of these big boys. These gearheads. Alright, what else we got going on here? Hey, we're slowing them pedals down. I did notice that, Bubbles. I noticed more people popping in for this one. I wonder what that is. I don't know if it's the game. I don't know if it's, like, again, the buzz around Spyro the past couple of days. Again, I, like I said before, if you guys... 
check out Canadian Guy A. He's got an awesome YouTube channel. He does a lot of cool stuff with Spyro and a lot of cool stuff with Crash. I was never really a big Crash person just because I just never got into it. Other than that, it has nothing else to do with Crash, but I've been a big Spyro guy from early days and uh, he makes a lot of cool Spyro videos. Um, and he made, he came out with a video a couple days ago, I guess he went out to PAX and, and spoke to some people that are in the industry and he got wind that a Spyro 4 uh, appears to be in the works with Toys for Bob. Toys for Bob are the, the developers that, that did the Reignited Trilogy here for Spyro, that remastered those three Insomniac developed games from the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, so, fingers are crossed here. Sounds like it's an early development, January 2024, from what he said. Uh, fingers are crossed that they, they make a phenomenal Spyro 4 game. Um, so, I love Spyro. And Spyro is in my roots as a gamer. Uh, just wanted to do something a little different tonight, so that was the inspiration behind it. Alright, we're just going to go up here and talk to our guy. He once got an orb challenger, of course. We're going to fuck these guys up with the fireballs. lightning stones. If you can replace them all and activate our generator, I I'd added very the, the Spider-Man games uh, to my wish list, and I just noticed that uh, uh, Spider the first Spider-Man on PS5 from like what 20 20 2021 um, is uh, is on sale. Um, so I might just have to get it. What's your take on Spy on Spider-Man Bubbles? Worth my time? Worth putting it on the channel? Something I should play off the channel? What do you think? Yeah? Okay. Something to keep in mind then. Nah, it's something to keep in mind because like I said before, I'm not... I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. I've never played any of the Spider-Man games. Um, I'm down to do it. I just wonder, like yeah, like I said, is it something I should do on the channel you recommend? Or something I should do, like off recording? Um, off the channel, though, because it's been all over the internet and it's just enjoying it for the first uh, time without having to worry about posting. It would be a nice... Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe the best play with that is to like just go and like do the first one like off recording, play it by myself, and if I really like it, really enjoy it, and get like a passion for it, maybe then I can maybe play the second one on uh, recording. You know, maybe that would be like the best play. We're gonna fuck this guy up. Sit down. Shut up, asshole. Um, that's a play. It's a good call, Bubbles. That's what, that maybe is what I'll do. I'll do the first one off recording and see how much I like it, and then maybe from there I can decide if I wanted to put the second one on it. Other games on the pipe, down the pipeline, obviously we've, we've done Heavy Last of Us. Um, no, don't shoot that at him. <laughs> Dude, I sent that guy to the fucking rainbow. <laughs> yeah, oh, for sure. For sure. Well, I think down the road, like, what I'm trying to think of, like, what I want to play next on here. Um, wow, did I miss that guy? Um, what I'm going to do next, or what I'd like to do next, obviously we've done Heavy The Last of Us. I've done Alan Wake 1. I've done Alan Wake 2. Uh, we fucked around with Dragon's Dogma a little bit. The big thing that I want to do on the channel next... If I can catch this goddamn elusive purple motherfucker. Um, I want to do a horror game. And there's one I have lined up. It's a game I've had uh, in my library for a hot minute. And it's called The Quarry, which is a super massive game. Uh, super massive are the people that made Until Dawn. Uh, Until Dawn came out late summer 2015. Again, I've said, I've said it before, that 2015 window like May to August, you got The Witcher, you got, um, you have Until Dawn, you have The Witcher 3, you have, uh, Life is Strange, and I even think, and Rocket League, Rocket League came out then too, uh, 
you had a lot of amazing and phenomenal games that came out in that like three or four month window. Um, the Quarry is also made by Supermassive Games. I played Until Dawn. It was a game I had on my radar for a very, very, very long time. It's a horror game that was like very much decision based. Um, basically, you have control of eight characters. You're at this like teen slasher type of movie style mansion in the woods. All this crazy shit. Excuse me. All this crazy shit happens, and basically you have to make it through the night and see how many people can escape the night. I made it out with three. I had one guy die at the end. I almost had made it out with four. Now that shows you how much like the game has a lasting impact on me. Like I still remember like what my final playthrough was and who survived and who died at the end. Uh, they went on to do The Quarry, which is a standalone, and then they did the Dark Pictures Anthology, which is still ongoing. I think there's like four games out for it right now, and I think I have one of them in my library that I want to do. You have like The Man of Badon, you have uh, Little Hope, you have uh, House of Ashes, and I think it's The Evil Within or something like that. Um, they're all very much decision-based horror games where every decision you make has a butterfly effect type of impact and if you you know you make a stupid decision it might cost a character their life and maybe you make it out with half of your party the whole party etc etc um i have the quarry in my library i plan on doing that next once we i'm at a point where i'm like content with like how much more do i want to do with dragon's dogma oh for sure oh god i, I don't know I know, I'm trying to think what Until Dawn, I mean, Until Dawn, goddamn man, that was so long ago. I would imagine it's really good. Supermassive is known for their horror games, and the quarry came out like two years ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'd imagine that they've only enhanced their match, or their, their music. It, 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 I'm sure it's phenomenal. Again, I've heard, I've heard really good stuff about the quarry. Alright, I need to like wrap this up. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I gotta I gotta put these uh these little electric nodes here into their proper spot. Um But I've heard nothing but good stuff about the quarry. That the quarry is what I'm gonna is what I'm trying to say is the quarry will be what I do next. I'll live stream that just because I feel like with a game like that, it's it's very much like what's your reaction to the shit that's happening in front of you? What's going down to these crazy moments? There's nothing like insane about it. It's very much like do your decisions make sense? Do your decisions get your party all the way to the end of the finish line? Or do your decisions fuck you up and get your characters killed? So I think the quarry is what I'm going to do next year once I feel like I'm in a comfortable spot with Dragon's Dogma. All right. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. I'm going to carry on here. Eat that shit. There's a new life. Anytime you see the blue butterfly, you're getting a new life. FYI, in case you didn't know that. All right, let's move on. Get distracted there. Sidetracked for a while. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate that. Oh my god, dude. That was absolutely eating me up and killing me. Like, how does Abby... One second here. How does Abby not see the bridges? Or any wolf? Isaac? Anybody? How do they not see those bridges? It's insane. Like, if you're going to make Abby and, like, Owen and Mel shocked whenever Lev brings up the bridge there when Yara's is about to get like she's on a surgeon's table you can't have throughout abby's perspective like scar bridges off in the distance like to the visible eye like you just can't have that because then it just makes abby and the rest of her crew look fucking stupid um and okay if there was just a couple of them if this was a small like camp of people okay there's how many hundreds if not thousands of wolf soldiers no one's seen these fucking bridges, <laughs> like, going from, like, one building to the next building. No one's seen them at all. That's insane, man. It's insane. The two that really stood out to me 
it was exactly bubbles it was the home base one and then I was really annoyed when I saw the final product of the short because when I changed the aspect ratio to like the horizontal aspect ratio it really cut down the bridge which was annoying but when you do that first flashback with Abby when she's in the water after she jumps out of like that ferris wheel though and you can really really see it in broad daylight like in the in the background but like it just cut it out of my picture until the very very end you saw it for like three seconds but yeah makes no sense man <laughs> makes no no fucking sense all right we are fucking everybody up how you like me now Do 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 do. Banana. -na. You said Fire Emblem? I've not heard of it. I feel like I. Wait, I take that back. I feel like I've heard of it. I just don't know anything about it. I'll have to research that and look that up. You like it? It's a strategy game, so every decision matters. Fire Emblem. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's funny how all of a sudden, like, everything's on PS5. Like, when I got a PS5, there was a couple things on there. And I remember the big thing that was coming out was The Last of Us Part 1 back in, like, early September 2022. Um, it's like, oh, okay. Like, they're re remaking or remastering The Last of Us Part 1. And other than that, they didn't have that much out. But, like, everything since then, there's been, a, like, a million fucking things that have come out since then. The PS5's really just got, like, a, an abundance of, uh, of games at their disposal right now. So, let's go up here and talk to this uh, electric motherfucker. My guy. Spiral, do you see that big building over there? The gear grinders are using it to steal our electricity. Please help us by shutting down the machinery inside. Is it like a Cossacks game? I feel like, is that like an RTS? I've not played an RTS-like game in a long time. That's what it sounds like, at least, but I, um... Back in the day, played Cossacks uh, and loved Cossacks. All right, let's go wait for these blades to come by here. Okay, so that makes it more consequential. I like stuff like that. Actually gives you like, you know, you gotta be like, actually be careful. Uh, I gotta fuck with this shit here. Do 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 do. My guy. Spyro, you what? have done well so far. TJ Watt. You could have this little trinket for good luck. If you have any questions. Thank you for that little trinket. I'm actually collecting them. My collection's growing. The next glides get tricky. You'll have to use your hover maneuver to The next glides get tricky. Action button. Remember to press the action <laughs> button when you're very close. I know, man. I appreciate the heads up, but thank you, Watt. Oh my god, <laughs> that would be insane, Bubbles. Yeah, that would be in that would that would be intense. 
It sounds fun though. I'll check it out. Just gotta jump to the end of the blade here. Uh, we're gonna cross with the one up ahead here. Just to finish this little puzzle. I don't even know if you want to call it a puzzle, but like a little challenge. Alright, now we'll touch base with that one over there, and we're good. Alright, here we go. Pain in the ass if you fuck up and have to restart that shit. Looks like we're not gonna make that, but you will make it, as long as you hit your triangle. Yeah, no, Bubbles, I appreciate that. I'm always down for recommendations. That's actually the first recommendation I think anyone's made on the channel. Um, so, I'm gonna check it out. Uh, I'm always down for recommendations. And, again, I'm just playing stuff that I either already have in my library, or something that like I think would be fun to play. So, people making recommendations is, is something that I would, would like to see more of. You know, let me know what you guys want to see. Like, I'm down to like try new shit. Again, I'm just playing shit that I either have in my library or something that I'm like, hey, this looks like a new game, like I want to have fun with it. Uh, so please, by all means, make recommendations. Skill point acquired. I can't remember gathering skill points in this game. Alright, you can go to your guidebook here, it shows you like where you're at, which is like a nice just a little benchmark with where you're at with the game. Skill points... Oh, okay. All windmills. Yeah, I don't think it really does anything. It just lets you know that you got all the windmills. Oh, fuck me. Took my eye off the prize. Took my eye off the prize, baby. And... Do we gotta go all the way back up? I think we gotta go all the way back up. That's some bullshit, my friends. That's some fucking bullshit. Um, yeah, I think we gotta go all the way back up. God damn it. Where the hell were we even at? Hold up, hold up. Well, yeah, we flew over there at the very end, right above us. Hold on. And then we flew to here. We definitely missed gems, I do know that. I flew from there to there. Hold up. Yeah, we gotta go back up. And there's another orb. Challenge. You motherfucker. Okay, we gotta go back around again. Can't take our eye off the prize, guys. That's what I did. I got stuffed. Alright, let's go back. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Isn't there like a Zephyr that can throw me up? I think it gives you like a shortcut. Hold on. Alright. I'm gonna check it out. You got me. I will at least I will at the very least check it out and see what is going on with it. Remember to press the Dude, what? I know dude. I know dude. Yeah, I'll check it out, Bubbles. Fire Emblem. Wow, I fell asleep there. I should have grabbed that blade. Oh man, good call. Show right now that I'm watching, I'm watching The Shield right now. Um, <clears throat> a FX show from like 020 to 08 that 
like 10 years ago, I watched like the first five seasons of it and I just fucking stopped watching it for some stupid reason. I have a bad habit with that, whether it's a, uh, a show or a video game, just for no reason, not at the fault of the, of the content. Um, sometimes I just stop watching something. And I got five seasons through it. It was really good, and I just and I never finished it. And it just always bugged me because people were like, "It's one of the best series finales of all time." And I finally started to push myself to get back into it and start watching it. So I'm watching The Shield right now. It's all. I'm also watching Westworld, which I watched the first two episodes of Westworld back when it came out in 2016. Uh, it had all the buzz in the world. I mean, we're talking like peak Game of Thrones era. Um, on HBO, where Game of Thrones is probably, like, at the peak of its powers, and then all of a sudden, this, like, insane show about, like, basically, like, a sci-fi version of, like, Jurassic Park, like, involving androids, is coming out, and I watched the first two episodes, and for whatever reason, I stopped watching it. I heard the show, like, drips, uh, or dips in quality as, as the seasons go on, um, but it felt, again, that's something I wanted to continue and watch, so I've been watching that. Sadly... Um, HBO or Max got rid of Westworld on Max. I don't know why. It got, it, like, it got rid of it. Uh, and it makes no sense to me why they got rid of it. But for whatever stupid reason, they got rid of it. So I'm currently paying for it on Prime. Like, three bucks a pop. So I'm going to get through the first season. I got like three episodes left. And then determine if I want to keep moving forward with it. Uh, as for that... I watched last night this documentary on Netflix. Um, what the hell was it called? It's like a true crime documentary about like this love triangle that has this insane twist in it uh, with this dude and, and the girl that he was dating. I, I mean, it's insane. I, I can't remember what it's called. But if you go to Netflix and you go to documentaries, what the hell is it called? It basically says something along the lines of like it, it's, it involves a love triangle. Um, it's it's from 2024. Like it's really it's brand new. That and I watched American Nightmare a couple weeks ago, which is another true crime. Like that's like a three episode or uh, true crime uh, documentary. I, I love true crime shit. Um, those are phenomenal. Really, really like enticing and just like it's one of those ones where it's like I can't stop watching this. It's it's, it's that juicy. Um, so that's what I'm watching right now. Down the pipeline, I want to watch The Leftovers. I never watched The Leftovers back when it was on HBO. I tried watching it multiple times. I could just never get into it. But very much like uh, The Shield, everyone's telling me that the show just gets to be phenomenal. And you just got to give it a shot. And you really just got to watch it to like truly appreciate it. So that's what's down the pipeline for me. Oh, really? Oh, dude, I, I hear you. Like, I have such a... I, like, my catalog of unfinished shit, whether it's a game or a show, is is embarrassing. Um, it's, it's really bad. So, wait, you can't watch horror movies or shows? I like horror shit. I watched Hereditary a couple weeks ago, and I've never watched Hereditary. I heard it was really good. And I thought it was pretty good. I'd give it, like, a 7 out of 10. Um, but I thought it was good. I, li I like being scared. I love watching, like, horror shit. So wait, it ruined it for you? So you can't watch like horror like movies or shows at all. Alright, so that's where I gotta hit it. Alright. Oh, I'm down again. I'm fucking down again. Are you fucking kidding me, man? What am I doing here? What am I fucking doing? Haha. <laughs> Just scared you too much. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, that can that can do it. That can do it. All right, I ne clearly need to like not fuck that part up again. Yeah, I like horror shit. The next, remember to. All right, what? God damn you! You're fucking my shit up, what? Yeah, I like horror stuff. I don't know what it is. I just really like it. And it's funny, like I've not really played like a horror game on the channel yet. I guess you could say Alan Wake Two is like a survival horror. The Last of Us has horror moments to it, too. I need to do a straight-up, like, scary horror game next, though, on here, which is, I guess, why I said that's why I want to do the quarry. And they're going to remaster uh, Until Dawn, I think, this year. So Until Dawn, something I'll go back and play. I did play Until Dawn. It's the only super massive game I've ever played, so Until Dawn, something I'm going to put on the channel here whenever it comes out later. Watch Annabelle. 
<laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Some childhood stuff will definitely like fuck some uh, some shit up for you. I had like the ultimate like. I got so scared like going to my basement as a kid. I don't know what it was. Like anytime I was like, you know, you get sent to the basement like you're bad. Parents like sending you to the basement. I don't know what it was. It just like, absolutely freaked me out. I think it was probably from watching like Home Alone. And like whenever he's in the basement and it's just like that like uh whatever it is, like that wood burner or whatever turns on. I think that's what like fucked me up. Oh my god, yeah. Anytime you got like like body like parts like you know jacked up and like all like messed up and like contorting in different like angles and directions like it's it's gonna do some shit to you all right i gotta hit it there i think i just gotta wait isn't there a second one all right here we go all right jesus christ that wasn't that bad That's it. Thanks for shutting down the factory. Here, I got this stuck between the gears. <laughs> That'll do it to you, though, Bubbles. All it takes is just a creepy character. There's some, like, really bad horror movies I remember watching as a kid, though, that just, like, I still think about. Like, did you ever watch Dead Silence? That was, like, in my... Like, see, I'm, I was born in 1990, so, like, just to give you perspective... So when I was in high school, I was in high school in like 04 through 08. Um, and some of the horror movies that came out then are just like some that like always stick with me. Dead Silent Silence was one that was just so absurd. Came out like 07 or 08 with like, who the hell's even in that? One of the fucking uh, Baldwin brothers is in it. I don't know what it is about that that just absolutely like fucked me up. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on, like, when you're born, you know? It's just, it's really, it's just, it's all, like, relative to, like, when you're born, I think. You know, what you grow up with and stuff like that. Like, I remember, like, one of the first, like, really scary movies I remember watching that I thought was scary whenever I was a kid was Sleepy Hollow. Came out in 1999 with Johnny Depp, and he plays Ichabod Crane. And I remember watching it when I was, like, 9 or 10, and I just remember thinking it was the scariest fucking thing in the world. Headless Horseman. Alright, did I... What the fuck? Where... The Fog, The Mist. What the hell was that movie... That makes me think of, um... What the hell was that movie that came out in, like, 03? Uh, oh, my God. It's like this creepy fucking thing comes out of a well. And you only see you see it, like, in photographs and shit. What the hell was that called? Um, it? No, not it. Jesus Christ, why am I saying it? It's not called it. Uh, I can't even remember now. I think, like, Naomi Watts or something like The Ring. Thank you, Bubbles. Goddamn. The Ring, yes. I remember the, seeing The Ring in theaters. That was fucked up. What am I doing here, though? Are we done? Where the hell is the portal to get out of here? Yeah, The Ring. I remember The Ring messed me up. I think it's down here. Here we go. Oh my. Maybe not. I gotta find a diode. Where's the last diode? Ah. There you are. It's still like sidetracked there. I'm like, I don't even remember how the hell to get out of this map. Here we go. It should be up. There's a guy, Buzz, sitting over there. Thank you 
Spyro. You've deactivated all yeah, the electric I hear barriers. Uh, we've been guarding this. But that's some of the, like the fun Here part about like horror. I think is that like it, as a reward. it should scare you. I, like, I remember another like movie that was like really big when I was growing up was like The Hills Have Eyes or like Wrong Turn, like some like hillbilly West Virginia like horror shit. That stuff was always like really like creepy too. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 with like Jessica Biel. That was another really good one. Go French fried, dude. You need that diode. Evil Dead? I don't think I've seen Evil Dead. Isn't that a game too? Or am I completely making that up? Isn't Evil Dead a game? It's a game and a movie? Dude, Hurricanes took forever. Alright, I'll do Sunny Beach. Take us long. Oh shit. Get that electric feel up your ass. I said, ooh, girl. Mm -mm. Shut me like an electric gear bomb. Baby girl. Mm -mm. Hi, Spyro. Prince Tortoise. Alright. <laughs> Dude, you worked at a you worked at a theater. That's awesome. I still like. I love the theaters. So I like. There was like a moment in time. I think, especially with COVID, that like there was like a fear that like theaters weren't gonna like be a thing anymore. Um. So that's glad. I'm glad to hear. What the fuck is happening right now? I can't like look up. It's got my camera's all jacked up. Um. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that like theaters like didn't go out of out of business. That job sucked. <laughs> you didn't like working in a theater. <laughs> I feel like that's just one of those jobs that you just like you see like you see it in like the horror movie or you see it like in a TV show, like someone working at the movie theater. And it's not like they ever make it look good, but like I feel like when you're watching it you just think like, oh shit, you can just go and see like all these movies. It's like, well no, not really, you're actually like working. They treated you like shit. Yeah, that sucks. That sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. What the fuck just happened, man? It's got fried. Yeah, that... Oh, bam. Hello. I can't even tell you the last time I even went to a movie theater. What do they, like, even tell you that you're doing your job wrong? Like, what? Yeah, people are ridiculous. Probably just, like, people that just, like, want to have control and just tell people that, like, they're they're wrong and just to make themselves feel better, which is unfortunate. Did you get people idiots like that? Dude, I got fucked again. Um, which is a shame. I mean, I've, we've all had jobs like that. I had jobs like that. Dishwasher. Uh, cook. Back in the day, high school and like college jobs, you know, it sucked. Oh, that sucks, man. I'm sorry to hear that, Bubbles. Yeah, it sucks that they do shit, people do shit like that. It's hard sometimes to get like good bosses, sadly. All right, fellas. Yeah, I did. I was in high school. My first job. Oh, I shouldn't say my first job. My first job was actually like being like a custodian. 
uh, at like the place I went to elementary school at during the summer. It was like a summer job, and it was probably like to date like the best job I ever had. I don't know why, it's just like really nostalgic, like going back to the school you went to, like it's like an elementary school. Like the, the place you went to like elementary school at, and you're like, we're like a custodian. <laughs> In the summer, all we really did were just clean desks and shit, and like move them into the hallway, and then they would like wax the floors and shit. Again, it was so basic and so simple, and maybe that's why it was so fun. Oh, okay, so I actually like, gave you like some like extra like I don't know education on it other than just like hey wash these dishes. That's cool. Gave you like some other like another like skill base or whatever like more knowledge about it. That's cool. Oh, there's that fucking thing. The workers have captured most of our baby turtles. Okay, Gromit. And the boxes they put them in are... Alright, I'll get all your fucking boxes for you, Gromit. Oh, man, yeah, that's the, that's the thing about those jobs that just really always sucks, is that they just... They'll sit there and ask more of you, and, like, give you, like, all this extra, like, training and stuff, but then they'll never pay you more money. That's just the unfortunate nature of it. Yeah. Nah, I hear you. Like I said, it just sucks. Like, they just never want to... That's what the thing with most companies. They just never want to... They'll sit there and ask more of you, take on all these extra responsibilities, and make it sound like it's going to be this great thing for, like, your future. But they don't want to pay you more money for it. <laughs> and then it's always like a question if it actually is going to benefit your future. So, yeah, I hear you. I think everyone's got that class that they just had memories, good memories for. No doubt. I had a home ex class in middle school that I just loved. I'd make chocolate chip cookies and I just ate the fucking cookie dough all the time. Hello, young one. I can't walk up there, mop it. I apologize for that. I'm gonna have to come back to that one. Whoa. We're out of control right now. Oh my god, I hit the fucking turtle. I killed... I killed the prince. <laughs> I killed Prince Kermit. No, that's cool. Yeah, it's always cool when you have, like, a, a teacher that just, like, truly cares and goes, like, the extra mile for you. You know, where they actually, like, care about you as a human being. That's, like, I don't know. You can't, you can't, like, duplicate that or replicate it. It's just second to none whenever you get that. Just wish it happened more often, I guess. No, dude, you gotta fucking turn around, man. I need you to go up there and sit on that pressure plate. Open the door up for those baby turtles and myself. Thank you. 
Thank you, young dragon. King from it. Oh, thank you, there, King from it. Please, oh, the baby turtles are safe up here. Oh, they take this as a token of our gratitude. Okay, there, King from it. I appreciate you. All right, another talisman down. If you go through that portal, it'll take you back to Avalard, Supper Forest. That's sad, man. Sorry to hear that. That's crazy. Anytime you see that, I unfortunately had a similar situation happen like that whenever I was in high school. Um, had a uh, classmate and a friend die, and it's just, I don't know what else to say about it other than it seems like it hits harder when you're that age and when you're, you know, that young. It just hits harder. I don't know, then, then, you know, when you're older. I don't even know if that makes sense at all, but when you're that age and you have someone, a friend that passes or a classmate that passes like that, it just absolutely just rocks your world. All right, Hunter, you're going to ask me if I want to change my camera system, and I'm going to respectfully decline. Your game camera is currently in passive mode. This mode requires you to manually control the camera. If you like, I can change the game camera to use... No. Okay, I won't change it. Remember. Thank you, Hunter. All right, so we did all of those. Let's take a look at the guidebook here real quick. Um, Summer Force is at 58%. We have 268 out of 400 gems. We're missing two uh, orbs. Glimmer is 46, 68, 98, 98, Sunny Beach. We have a couple more Aquaria Towers, I believe. Is that it? Is it just Aquaria Towers? I can't even remember. Um... Ah, uh, there's that motherfucking scoundrel money bags. Son of a bitch there wants to turn that fucking wall there into a uh, open courtyard there with, I believe, Aquaria Towers. I think that's what's sitting behind there. Um, he's going to rob us blind, though, before we get a chance to walk through it. So, I don't know. Let's go talk to him, I guess. Ah, this is, I think, where we fight Crush or Gulp, whatever. I think it's Crush. He's the first boss. This talisman door will only open if you have all six Summer Forest talismans. Once the door is open, Ripto and Crush will be waiting in the dungeon. <laughs> That's pretty much the response that Moneybags gets. Like, you see him and it's just like, I don't know. It's like getting that, like, just like really, like, upsetting, like, mail from, like, a loan provider or a utility provider that you're just like, God damn it, man. I gotta send these people money. <laughs> That's pretty much what Moneybags is. Moneybags is literally like the fucking like gas company knocking on your door saying, "Hey man, I need that. I need you to send me that check. I need you to make that, pay that bill." Say, Spyro, you see this uh, wall Say, here? Spyro. I hmm. bet you're dying to know what's on the other side. If only I had a few more gems, I might be able to remember how to lower. I just the wish wall. you could fucking negotiate with this guy. He is a lone shark. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. This guy's an absolute fucking hound. How much, dude? 400? Alright, well, it's not as much as it was to teach me how to swim underwater, oh, at least. Yeah. Aquaria Towers, that's what I thought. I think this is the last one. Um, we'll just hit Aquaria Towers up, and we'll... We'll go ahead and, and beat the first boss, and that's where we'll end it tonight. Might as well. Come here, you son of a bitch. Alright, Aquaria Towers isn't long. We'll run through it. Let's go. Yeah, no, nah, I, again, I, I'm not gonna, it's not like I'm sitting here gonna, like, yeah, I'm gonna go and, like, play all through Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. This might be something, like, once in a blue moon, like, I pop on if we just want to do something, like, laid back and chill. Because it is very much just a laid back, chill fucking platform game that's, like, meant for, like, it is meant for, like, more, like, kids than adults to play this. 
It's very nostalgic, I think, for anyone that played this game growing up in the late 90s. Um, and again, with the, the news and the buzz, wanted to play it tonight. Uh, but the next video I put out will be a Dragon's Dogma video. Um, I'm thinking next weekend, I'm not sure if it's Friday, I'm not sure if it's Saturday yet, but I'm going to do Abby's Day 3 live stream. Um, I still, again, that was the first thing I, I, I ventured out with in this in this channel, uh, was The Last of Us, and it, it we're close to the end. Uh, I think I'm just going to do Abby Day 3 live stream next win next weekend and then after that I'll do the farm in Santa Barbara I don't know the weekend or the weekend after that um, so I'll figure that out later here this week goes on the funny looking guys with the shock sticks have drained all our wa all right we got to get the water back in this tank here so our guy doesn't die all right we're already off to a good start got the water coming through the hatch all right there we go hey 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 boom bada bing bada boom Fuck those crabs up. Oh, it's it's. I legitimately, it legitimately makes me uncomfortable. Bubbles. Legitimately uncomfortable. I don't like the end of Abby's Day Three. I think we all know what we're talking about here inside the theater. Um, I don't like it either. I'm with you. <laughs> I think that's the whole purpose of it. It's, it is meant to be uh, uncomfortable, but uh, yeah, I'm with you. I don't like it at all. Not one bit. Fuck me, man. I know. Yeah, I mean, that's the weird part about it. It's just it's meant to make you feel uncomfortable. All of a sudden, you're hunting the person that like you've played this series as. Like that's the purpose of it. Like again, I I get it. Like I understand it. Uh, you know, and again, it's 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 definitely meant to make you feel uncomfortable. But I hate it. <laughs> I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm with you. It makes me feel uncomfortable. Alright, let's make sure we got this whole level clear here before I hit that button. Here goes the fucking crab. Sayonara. It's... It's challenging, I think, because... There's moments there where it, it, it's almost, I mean, she just, she booby traps the fuck out of the place. Like, we know she puts trap mines down, but I think she, does she only put the trap mines down, like, whenever you fall through the floor? I think. I think it's only whenever you fall through the floor does she put the trap mines down. But she's tough on that main floor, where, like, where you fight, like, the theater infestation, like, stalker in No Return. Um... Oh my god. Yeah, it's insane. Like it's 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 rough. Like when you fall through the floor it gets even harder down there. Is that where the sharks are? Oh. Alright, what the fuck am I doing? And why am I doing it wrong? You know, dude, yeah, you don't gotta tell me about blowing the trap mine up and, and blowing yourself up with it. Like, it's... That game will fucking do it to you. There ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> it's so fucking unfortunate whenever that happens. And it, it's, like, really shocking, too. <laughs> dude, her, like, death scenarios, whenever you go down below into the depths there, is, like, pretty frightening. Like, actually, like, frightening. Oh, come on.
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's the part of it that sucks. Is that like? And again, I, I get what they're doing. That's why they do what they do there. I mean, they very much make it so you feel bad. You know, like you're on board with Abby, and then all of a sudden, like you get to the end of that, and it pits you against, like, okay, well, how much do you really care about her? Let's like, let's see how you feel after you fight Ellie. And it's, oh man, it just, yeah, I don't, I hate that part. I really don't like it. I've never liked it. I didn't like it the first time I played it, and here we are, going on four years later, close to four years later, I, and I still don't like it. And I've never changed on that. I hate that fucking part. modest fee. 100 gems? Yeah, I guess so. Doing business Jackass. You, this submarine is one I mean, I could just go down there and light them all the fuck up. Yeah, I don't even know why I paid him that money. That was actually stupid. I could just go down there and firebolt all of those guys. I just gave that guy free money. It's terrible. Oh my god. Threw me overboard. Getting close to the end here. Uh, all right, we'll hit her up. Is that it? I mean, I could go back and fight those guys. Ah, you motherfucker! Up, 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 up. Come on, Spyro. Let's go back. It's 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 bugging me that I left those guys up there. Give me all them gems. Is that it? I can't believe we gave that guy 100 gems for that. Oh yeah, I don't don't make a last of us part three bubbles, no doubt, no doubt in my mind. I mean, Druckmann even said, like I said before, I made that video about it. <clears throat> um, there's gonna be a last of us part three. He even says at the end, he goes, "Well, I finally found the concept for the last of us part three at the end of that grounded two documentary." Which someone brought this up in one of the comments, and I agree with them. It's like, why does there need to be a concept for you to like, you know? finally feel good about like what the game's gonna be about like can't you just like without there being a concept of what part three is gonna be about can't you just be like abby's gonna do this ellie's gonna do this abby's whatever not might maybe not even be in it you know uh tommy might be in it but ellie's gonna go and do this we're gonna introduce new characters like why do you have to like develop a concept before you before you feel comfortable you know uh thinking about what the where the story is going to go in the last of us part three like why does there have to be a concept first like i do agree with that like i you know but whatever i mean i'm 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 nipping there yeah but the th my my thing is though is that there there will be a last of us part three there's no if ands or buts about it yeah i mean he's already like i said before neil Druckmann literally like mutes all of, all the comments on his tweets whenever he tweets something that man would not say on something as public as a Grounded 2 documentary that's had, I don't even know, over a million views now on YouTube. Um, he's not going to mention that if, unless he absolutely truly means that this game's going to happen. So, it will happen. Our world is... Alright, Hoppo. Give me the goddamn talisman and let me bounce. Give me that seashell. Alright, my friend. Goodbye. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> Having a hell of a time here getting through there. Yeah, yeah, again, I get it. I get it. You know, it almost feels like they harp on so much about it. Like, whatever the concept is, they harp and harp and harp about what the concept's supposed to be. Like, just make the game. 
like they were almost so over the top in part two about like, oh, vengeance is bad. Vengeance is bad. If you ever watch, go watch Moist Critical. If you ever watch him, Penguin Zero on YouTube, he's he's awesome. Um, he he makes a good video back in the day. Like he just calls it like a moist meter, uh, because his name's just Moist Critical. Which I think back in the day, I definitely played Gears of War against him back in like the 06, 07 days. I feel like I definitely played against Critical. In his early Gears days, and if you ever watch his videos, he's a huge Gears of War fan. Um, but either way, I'm getting off topic. Uh, he says in his like critique of the game that like it's just so over the top about how they just harp on like vengeance is bad, vengeance is bad, vengeance is bad. It's like, and he's right. That is, they harp on it a lot, like a lot. All right, let's go take this fucking boss on, and then we're gonna call it a night. This is a speedway, I think. Nice work, Spyro. The orbs you're carrying have activated the special portal. You won't find a talisman in Ocean Speedway. Yeah. But if you're fast, you'll get lots of treasure. <sighs> yeah, I mean, like, Ellie could have just killed Abby, and I wouldn't have cared. I mean, it would have been rightfully done. And if Abby would have killed Ellie after Ellie kept trying to get, like, you know, go after her and her crew, like, that would have been fair, too. You know? Like, ultimately, at the very end of that game, like, when they're fighting in the shores of Santa Barbara, I do think that Ellie should have just killed Abby. I think she should have just killed her. Again, I grew to really like Abby. I like Abby a lot. I understand why she did what she did. I respect why she did what she did. Nothing wrong with it. Did the same thing that Joe or whatever Ellie would have done. Um, but I, I just think with Ellie going all that way, she should she should have just killed Abby. <laughs> I think she should have just killed her. Alright, if you look here, you're going to see an orb. Yeah, I think so too. I think so too. I think they'll help each other. I think they'll make it to where Abby feels an obligation to help Ellie. Uh, because the Fireflies are going to try to like take Ellie. And force her uh, will to you know get her immunization or whatever the hell you want to call it. You know, and I think that they're going to do it with bad intentions for control and power purposes. And I think Abby's going to feel an obligation to step in. And I think that's where their stories are going to intertwine. Well done, Spyro. Now that you have six talents. Okay, Spyro. Jump through that hole in the floor to get down to Crush's dungeon. I'll help you by tossing sheep through the hole, if I can catch them. Good luck. All right. Thanks, girl. Boss fight. Castle Dungeon Spyro, I thought that you might want to know how Ripto and his monsters arrived in Avalar. You see, last week in the Winter Tundra, the professor was working on some new super portal technology. Yep. There. I agree. Last orb in place. Well, I think one of the things that people take for granted sometimes is that Ellie would have just willfully given her life away to the Fireflies back in the end of one. You know, I mean, they don't ever get her consent from her to do it. They just knock her out, drug her, and go for it. You don't know that she would have agreed to that. She didn't know she was going to give her life up to that. We don't know that. It's easy to say what she thinks she'd do, but we don't know that. I personally don't think she'd do it. Where are She's got to find somebody, though, in part three that makes her want to live again. Because at the end of part two, she's she's beaten down pretty good. Mm, no drag. So she's going to have to find somebody wonderful. that makes her want to continue. Crush, go back and pack my bags. We're moving in. Crush, go back and pack my bags. We're moving in. Say hello to your new king. Dude, you're a fucking dwarf. <laughs> and king of shit. Oh, my. oh, dude, the professor's I, glasses I, I are fucked. The They're I fucked. Think I've broken my glasses. Oh, fuck me. Crush, go through the portal, you idiot. Tell <laughs> all your friends to take the orbs and scatter them throughout Avalar. Quickly. 
Dude, you're a despicable little creature. This is bad news for Avalar. Hunter, why didn't you chase him? Uh, yeah. Hunter's kind of a pussy. After him, <laughs> Have to say it. Didn't he say something about not liking dragons? <laughs> Professor, could we catch a dragon to help us? Look at Hunter, man. He's yes, sitting there shaking in his so. fur. We'll need a world that has an alignment. Knees are knocking. Intercepting <clears throat> one of these creatures. How about Glimmer? I <laughs> know for real. Glimmer. All right, let's go, man. Here comes Crush. All right, boss fight. We're gonna knock this fucking dude out once and for all. It's not a terribly difficult fight, from what I recall. Especially if I'm shooting firebolts. Yeah, this is gonna be nasty. That's right. Okay, I was gonna say I can't remember what you had to do. All right, crush. You're getting fucked, buddy. You doofus. All right, I think he's gonna send a ball at me now. Yep. Nah. Not quick on the trigger on that one there. That's it, guys. Rinse and repeat. Oh! He was fucking running after me that time. Alright, halfway there. Get Ripto sitting there watching his fucking minion just getting smoked. Two more. Whoop. Oh shit, I wasn't ready for that last one. That was my bad. What? Are you shocked that your dumbass fucking crony got smoked you by me? Able to defeat that simpleton, but golf <laughs> will be more than a match for you. No, golf's Bring the same asshole. On, Trust me. <laughs> Bring it on, shorty. Golf's also a dumbass. I'm here now. They're really shocked by this. Him and make sure it's painful. Nah, golf's gonna run head for the hills. Long dragon. Oh, we'll meet again, partner. Don't you worry. I'll see you down the road. Oh, there goes the guidebook. We've upgraded our guidebook. Hey, roll out the banners, baby. I don't know what those banners mean, but it's not Ripto's ugly face anymore. Crush has been defeated, and Summer Forest is back in the hands of the good guys. And now we're going to go to the prettiest over uh, home world in all of Spyro. Oh, that Ripto has caused enough damage. All his meddling has cost me a fortune. If it wasn't for Spyro, I'd be bankrupt. If Ripto were here, I'd give him a piece of my mind. In fact... I know, man. Uh, get ready, though. Get ready. It's funny, though. I was a champion bantamweight boxer at university. <laughs> I still know a few moves. Take that and that. No. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> <Why you? laughs> oh man. 
Money bags is such an idiot. Yeah, his stupidity has no bounds at all. Um, but Autumn Plains, which is where we're going right now, this is the prettiest homeworld in all of Spyro with the prettiest music. We'll just take it in for one minute. I'm also a sucker for anything fall. Fall is just my favorite time of the year. Didn't take a screenshot before too. That's a that's that's a misstep on my part, Bubbles. You gotta get that thumbnail. Yeah. I didn't get a fucking thumbnail. That's that's some terrible planning on my part. We'll just use this one. Whatever. Can't beat it. But yeah. Autumn Plains. This is the next home world. Same thing, rinse and repeat, go through all the portals, get your talismans, get your orbs, and at the end you're going to fight Gulp. Um, down the road, we'll do this again. Why not? For a chill stream night. Again, Spyro is super chill. Uh, very nostalgic for a lot of people that grew up with the PlayStation 1 era playing this game. Again, some cool news populating here recently uh, with some Spyro 4 talk. Um, hopefully that there's some... You know, some actual like meat with that. Hopefully, there's actually some weight that that actually happens. I know it's been rumored now ever since Toys for Bob made the Spyro Reignited trilogy back in 2018. So I'm hoping it that, that it happens someday. But it was nice to just jump back into the Spyro world. It's been a minute since I played. But yeah, Bubbles. Yeah, we're gonna definitely gonna get back into Dragon's Dogma 2 next. Um, probably just gonna make a couple videos and upload those to YouTube before I live stream Dragon's Dogma again. It's just a lot of traveling and I wanna like get everything down that I can. I wanna master that game more. And I feel like I'm a lot of it I'm learning on the fly, which I am. <laughs> it's not like I'm not I'm not kind of learning on the fly. I am learning on the fly as I play that game. Um, so I want to fuck around a little bit and, and really like get like you know, the combat down, um, you know, everything that you go with your vocation down, your party down. I want to get all those things down before I live stream again. So the next video, couple videos that come up for Dragon's Dogma 2 are going to be videos that I upload uh, as opposed to me live streaming like I've done. Um, am I going to stream next weekend? Um, I will be streaming next weekend. One of those days next weekend, I will be doing Abbey Day 3, The Last of Us Part 2, Abbey Day 3. Um, and if I get a couple videos out this week for Dragon's Dogma 2, the other night I'll, I'll jump back into doing live streaming for Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, that's the plan going forward. But I do want to finish and wrap up the last of a story, which is what I embarked. You know, it's, it's the foundation of this channel that I made back at the, I think at the end of August or beginning of September was the last of us was a story. Um, and again, no return slowed the story down a lot. And then, you know, Alan Wake 2 came out and it slowed the story down a lot. So I need to just get these last two videos out for the story. Um, and it's going to be Abby Day 3 will be one video and I'm going to do a live stream. And then the farm in Santa Barbara will be the last video. Um, so uh, Abby Day 3 is going to happen next weekend. I'll let you know as we get further into this week. Um, and then Dragon's Dogma 2, I'll jump back into doing live streaming. I made a couple videos out this week progressing the story and just truly really just trying to like hone my skill and craft a little bit in the Dragon's Dogma 2 world. Um, you know, cutting out some of the fat, maybe putting some videos out that just, you know, show some highlights, some funny moments, some combat moments, and some story moments before I jump back into live streaming Dragon's Dogma 2. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's the whole thing. Bubbles. Yeah, it feels almost like it's just like something that just needs to be done. I need to wrap up uh, uh, the Last of Us Part 2 story. There's two videos left, so I'll just live stream them. It's just easier to live stream it. There's less work involved, um, you know, with with uh, with doing it as opposed to like recording the gameplay, editing it, uploading it. It's just easier if I live stream it. I've played it so many times that I can just buzz through it on a live stream. It's not it's not going to take me any long long amount of time. So, um, and the next big game that I do want to play, I want to do something a little bit different, as we talked about earlier. Uh, uh, it will be The Quarry. I want to do a horror game. Shout out Super Massive Games. They do a great job with like decision-based horror games. Uh, and The Quarry is something I've had in my, log, my backlog now for a hot minute. 
on it and waiting to play it uh, until Dawn Remastered is coming out. I think some point this year we'll certainly get that up to at that time, but Supermassive does a phenomenal job with that. Uh, other Supermassive games I'll do to the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan, or Medan, uh, Little Hope, uh, House of Ashes, and I think The Evil Within or something like that. We're going to get to all those. Don't you worry. Um, oh, yeah, we'll get through the farm in Santa Barbara real quick. No doubt about it. So that's what's coming next again this week. Take Keep an eye out for the uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. If I get some good moments, I'll make a couple shorts out of them, too. That's something I've not been able to do yet, either. It's just using the YouTube editor for live streams isn't exactly uh, conductive to making shorts, in my opinion. I think it's easier to make shorts whenever you record it and you can go to Sheriff Factory and cut something up and make a short. So That's what I'll be doing this week. Um, check this video out. Bubbles, I appreciate you, as always, uh, tuning in. Um, chatting with you. I appreciate the hell out of you. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, keep an eye out for the videos coming out this week. Again, next week, Abbey Day 3, and then Dragon's Dogma 2 will be jumping back into it. Uh, Chuck Canyon, the man, the myth, the legend. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bubbles. All right. Hey, if you guys enjoyed this, drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. If you want to see more Spyro down the road for like maybe like the cat, the, the occasional once in a blue moon, like chill stream night, Spyro's a great game for that. Rocket League's a great game for that. Let me know what you guys think. Drop me a comment. Um, if you enjoyed this, please like. If you want to see more, please subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much, guys. See ya.